New mutants are dangerous. That's why you're here. Ooh, scary. This isn't a hospital. It's a cage. Together, we can get out of here. That thing will kill you! He's right, it's Mate. So am I. That was so hot. All of you are dangerous. That's why you're here. This isn't a hospital. It's a cage. We are the cast from The New Mutants, which is unlike other superhero movies. You have a whole bunch of really traumatized teens. We're also different, but we also have something like massive in common. Not just the fact that we have powers, but that we've been through this life experience together. And you have these things inside of you. If you struggle to deal with them, what does that look like? I don't think we're here to get better. They have such an incredible relationship and they really bring each other through really difficult times. We connect over who we really are, mm -hmm. not in spite of who we really are. Yeah. And it shows in how we all come together and use a little bit of our powers all together. We can get out of this. Together. What's the last thing you remember, Danny? to share their first time. Rain? I was 13. I thought it was a dream. I just lost control. Sam? I started panicking. People got hurt. Roberto? My girlfriend had burned her. Ileana? I killed 18 men, one by one. It's a cage. It's important we find out your power so we can help you get better. I saw something. I don't think she wanted me to see. I don't think we're here to get better. We can get out of this together. Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. This is going to be my brand new Marvel New Mutants trailer video. There's a bunch of new footage. The director even confirmed one of my big theories about their original post credit scene. So we'll break it all down, including what's going on with X-Men and mutants within the MCU. Kevin Feige has said some things, and they're even setting some stuff up in the Disney Plus series that are happening later this year. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. There's going to be a bunch of big stuff coming up. I know there's lots of questions too. So we'll just start with the footage, then I'll talk about the post credit scene, and then X-Men inside the MCU. So we'll just start with the footage, then I'll talk about mutants inside the MCU and the stuff that they're setting up on the Disney Plus series. Most of this new footage focuses on their specific powers, giving you a much better look at what they actually are on screen. I think they just had unfinished special effects before. The director said that before the Fox Disney buyout, the film was about 75% done. The rest of this mostly shows them bonding, coming together as the New Mutants X-Men team, while they still think that they're inside a hospital. Obviously, like part of this is probably real, part of it is probably happening inside their minds, just based on what the director has said. The director called it sort of a mix of One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest with The Matrix in Nightmare on Elm Street, so you're never quite sure if what's happening is actually really happening or if it's just something happening inside your mind. There's a bunch more footage of Roberto da Costa, who's Sunspot in the comics, showing you his personality, how he's a little bit of a poser, how his powers work. They're all meant to be teenagers, which is why they have some of those funny, awkward, teenager, high school style moments. Like when Magic starts using her powers and gets real badass, he just says, that's so hot. He's from a super rich family in the comics, which is why he's the one that's dressed like he's super preppy, even though they're making it seem like they're all trapped inside an insane asylum because their families think they're possessed or crazy or just plain freaks that need to be cured. 
His sunspot powers look like this in the comics, so it's a little bit different tuned for the movie. We get a much better look at Charlie Heaton's cannonball powers in action. It's weird that he's tied up to this cement block while he's showing up. His power mostly manifests as him flying through the air with his body hardening like a cannonball the faster he travels. So while he's spinning around in the air, he gets stronger and stronger. We haven't seen a full transformation from Maisie Williams' Wolfsbane character yet, but they're probably still finishing special effects on that. Make all the dire wolf Game of Thrones jokes you want. Danny Moonstar's powers are mostly the ability to manifest people's deepest fears, very psychic based abilities. You kind of see that play out through the footage where she's slowly remembering these disasters in the past. Like, do you remember when your powers manifested? There was a disaster. They told me to run. She's probably talking about her parents when Demon Bear first came to try and kill them. You see way more demon bear during this trailer footage. As the name implies, he's a giant demonic bear, but he mostly attacks people as a psychic projection that can manifest physically sometimes. That's why the movie version of Demon Bear in the trailer makes him seem kind of like the smoke monster from Lost, like these big smoky effects. Is he real? Is he fake? Where is he coming from? Part of this reality is probably fake and a result of him manipulating the other kids' powers without them realizing it, except for magic. She seems like she's one of the few characters that figures out pretty early on that things aren't what they seem and tries to slap some sense into the other characters. Talking about magic, probably one of the coolest characters in this movie, she's got a bunch of different comic book powers. She's got the soul sword that she manifests here. It's called the soul sword because she's projecting her own life energy into the form of a blade. If you're a big Avatar The Last Airbender fan, it's kind of like her energy bending the life energy within her body, like Aang energy bends at the end of that series. The armor that she forms around herself is actually called the Eldritch Armor. It's connected to her use of magic and sorcery. The more magic she uses, the thicker and crazier the armor gets. If she continues using her magic for long periods of time or in really extreme ways, horns start to pop out of her head and she starts to take on this more demonic form. The really cool thing about her teleportation powers that you see in the trailer are that she's actually opening portals to a separate dimension that they call Limbo, where she is Sorceress Supreme and has absolute power. Just like Doctor Strange is Sorcerer Supreme in the main Marvel Universe, in the comics she can also teleport through time, but I don't know if they're going to make her that powerful in this first movie. The director actually just confirmed my big theory about the sequel. So originally the movie was planned to be a trilogy. They were going to have a big post credit scene with Antonio Banderas. He was actually going to play Roberto da Costa's father, who is part of the Hellfire Club in the comics, and he be the main villain of the sequel. In terms of mutants and these characters inside the MCU, they're actually treating this movie, the New Mutants movie, the same way the MCU is going to treat Deadpool 3, the movie. Deadpool, the character, Ryan Reynolds, will be part of the MCU eventually, but Deadpool 3 is going to be rated R, and because Disney does not release rated R movies and doesn't want that kind of tone inside the MCU, Deadpool 3 is going to be treated like it exists in this own little bubble of continuity. You know, it can reference anything that it wants, make fun of any Marvel characters that it wants, but you're not going to see old Chris Evans' Captain America show up during Deadpool 3, and you're not going to see the other big Avengers characters pop in. Later what'll happen though is you'll have an MCU team up movie like Avengers 5 or some big crossover movie. Deadpool will appear during that but he'll be written in a more PG-13 way because all the MCU movies tend to be PG-13. It's a whole different story for the mainstream rebooted X-Men movies like obviously Marvel is working on a new X-Men movie eventually. It's not going to happen for a long time. But a really good example of them introducing mutants into the MCU is the new version of Wolverine. So what they're doing right now is they're building on pre-existing MCU continuity to introduce the new X-Men characters long term. The really cool thing about the new version of Wolverine is that they're going to surface him through the Weapon X program. So think about it this way. You go back to the Incredible Hulk film. Look at what Thunderbolt Ross is doing. He's talking to Emil Blonsky about the super soldier program that he just brought out of the mothballs. When he goes in to grab some new super soldier serum, the canister actually reads Weapons Plus. The Weapons Plus program is what the Weapon X program is part of. It's Weapon 10. Wolverine is Weapon 10, the 10th iteration of the Weapons Plus program. Captain America was designation Weapon 1 in the Weapons Plus program. Within the Falcon and Winter Soldier series that's going to be airing on Disney Plus later this year, they're also bringing back the Super Soldier program, the Weapons Plus program. So they're just slowly setting up the concept of Weapon X, and that's where the new Wolverine will debut. 
But everyone, let me know in the comments, when do you think we're actually going to see them transition from Weapons Plus and get to that Weapon X? How many movies do you think it's going to be? We've got a big Venom 2 trailer that'll be coming really soon, more Morbius trailers, more Spider-Man stuff. Tom Holland did reveal that they're still going to start filming Spider-Man 3 this summer. So a lot of stuff that's happening later this year still seems like it's going to be okay. So don't worry too much about that right now. Everyone click here for that new Marvel Falcon and Winter Soldier teaser trailer video and click here for that brand new Black Widow trailer with all the new Taskmaster footage. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay awesome. I'll see you guys tonight.